Hi everyone, Mr. Teabag again here from beautiful Dominican Republic. Thanks for tuning in, I appreciate it. In this episode we're going to cover about scams, which is not an unfamiliar thing to people around the planet. It happens in especially every tourist spot internationally. But I've never quite experienced it to the degree that I've experienced it here in DR, especially on the north coast. A lot of the people will join in on a scam, the police, the lawyers, right through to the judges and politicians. And I don't like that. And if you're a good Dominican watching this, you're smart enough to know scams are not good for the economy, scams not good for tourism, because then you end up with beaches looking like this. And that was a shot from Cabaretta on a normal day here, with a beautiful tropical island and sunny weather. Where instead you can have beaches looking like this. Which was a shot from Spain. There's two things you need to appreciate to grow a good economy in tourism. Referral business. If I'm happy as a tourist, I'm going to tell my friends how good it was and then they're going to come as well. And then repeat business. If I'm happy, I'm going to come back. But I want to feel safe. I want to feel respected when I go to either visit or live in a country. So let's look at some of the things you need to avoid if you come here to either vacation or to live so you can keep the dice in paradise. Here we go. When you move to the Dominican Republic or you just live here for a few time, you just have to check everything three times before you do something or before you trust somebody. Because uh, a lot of people just look for to get the money from you. Uh, it actually happened about two times before in the uh, capital in Santo Domingo. I attempted to uh, rent a vehicle and the company that I rented from, one of the things that they wanted uh, was that they requested that I leave my passport. Uh, you know, I don't believe there's any rules here, any regulations that indicates that you have to leave your passport. So. Um, and, and just, I didn't do it, and my advice would be to any extra hat or any visitor to the country, if you go somewhere and they're a reputable business, they're not going to require you to leave your passport. One piece of advice I'd like to give people who are visiting us for the first time, or maybe second or third, is don't exchange your money at the airport. They have a horrible exchange rate. You're much better off to give the cab driver 20 or 25 dollars to take you to Sosua, maybe Cabarete or, or Porta Plata and have him take you to a reputable exchange rate. Welcome to the country, we hope you have a fine time. Thank you. Well Mr. T, I'm not sure if it's the biggest scam because there's a lot of big scams here, but the most prevalent is, my friend, my friend. If this happens to you, and it will happen to you, the first thing you want to do is say, Amigos, que es mi nombre? What is my name? And they don't know. They never know. Because everyone is their friend. They want money. If you go to park your car, if you have a car, someone who just happens to be standing there on the side of the street will try to charge you 100 pesos for parking your car there. That happens wherever you go. Would you like a massage? Would you like a pedicure, manicure? Ah, no thank you, no gracias, no gracias. Okay, one beer for me? No, 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 I have to go. Okay, one cigarette, one cigarette. Because the point of the whole thing is for them to gain something for nothing at all. Hustling, hustling. Uh, it's hard to get angry about it. But you do get angry at times, more frustrated, because it is so prevalent. Uh, but uh, it's a poor country, and you're going to have that. And they, you know, they regard us as rich. We know we're not. Uh, but uh, they think money is no object, and uh, that you're free with it. And many people are. Um, you're going to have children come up to you on the street. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Never give money always offer food because if you watch the children after you give them the money immediately five or six more will show up and they will turn down the food but if you watch them after you've given them given them even 10 pesos they're gonna take that money 
to someone, an adult, who is running those children. And this is despicable, so I don't do it, but I offer the children something to eat. And they'll turn it down, because they're not hungry. What I have found down here in my nearly two years of living here is um, I have been scammed by lawyers twice. And the sad part is you really expect the lawyer to be on your side. Down here you find out the only side they have is theirs. They're just out to make a dollar and any dollar they can get from you. Um, the service is not what we expect back home. We expect them to be looking out for our interests. That doesn't happen. Uh, it's very frustrating when you're dealing with a country that you're not really familiar with, with the laws, and you invest in a lawyer to do that for you. And on both, both times it's happened to me, they've just been trying to take advantage of me for money. So to me, that's one of the biggest scams to be aware of down here. Uh, the biggest scam for me here in the DR is, is being a gringo, is being a tourist. Uh, price gouging would be number one. So when you walk into a store and there's no price on something and you want it, it's best off to go outside, go find a local Dominican, tell them to, the product that you want, and have them ask the price so you know what the real price is. When it comes to renting anything down here, whether it be a quad bike, a motorbike, car, or even an apartment, make sure you video everything thoroughly, anything that could be damaged. Because one of the scams is they're gonna get one or two months deposit out of you, or some kind of deposit, and then at the end they don't wanna give it back because, oh, you damaged this or you damaged that. So your only proof is gonna be you showing the video. Just like everywhere else in the world, they have ATM scams down here as well. So use ATMs inside buildings like banks or supermarkets, anywhere where you can see a security guard sitting around with a weapon. That way, they probably haven't managed to rig that machine. When you jump into any public transportation, make sure you've secured your belongings really well, or you keep your hands on them, because pickpocketing is widespread down here, so everything has legs if you don't watch out. Another known scam down here is when you meet fake tour salespeople, people who sell excursions. Unless they are from an office where you can go and see the office or meet the people, they could be scamming. And if they manage to get a deposit out of you and you are booked in to be picked up at some point and they don't turn up, it's probably because it was a fake tour salesperson who just took your money and ran away. When you want to take public transportation down here, make sure you're aware that they will try to get two, three, four times as much from you as a foreigner than the average Dominican. So you've got to ask around what the true price is before you approach that motor concho or that taxi publico. So you can go up and say, 50 pesos por plata, si o no? And then, so in you go. So you've got to be firm, you've got to come across like you know what the price is, otherwise they will try to get the better of you. And another hint, hold your phone up with your calculator and show the amount. That way there's no misunderstandings when you get to the other end. So, another scam in the Dominican Republic, one to be careful of, especially if you're driving. So usually the targets are either elderly couple, foreigners, or possibly a lady traveling on her own. Driving along a road, be it Puerto Plata by Playa Rada or on the main highway from uh, traveling from Puerto Plata, traveling from Puerto Plata to Santiago, is you're driving along and suddenly a motorbike or a car will come alongside you. Occupants are waving like mad and pointing down at your bottom of your vehicle, continually telling you as if there's something wrong, there's something wrong. Well, that's the beginning of the scam you've just been targeted. What will happen is they will try to get you to pull over. If you do, two people will get out. One will probably start in, uh, talking to you and telling you, look, there's something wrong under your car. The other person will duck down, look under your car, and what you won't see is in his hand, he'll have a small tube which has been filled with engine oil, dirty engine oil, or he'll have a small piece of a metal component from any car. He'll come out from underneath the car and say to you, look, senora, there's un problem. You have oil, a siete and that's it. You look under there and there's a problem. They'll tell you it's not a big job. They have a friend just down the road who happens as a garage and they can pop down there now not to worry about it. They'll be back in 20 minutes. They'll have everything fixed for you. 
if you could just give them up front the money for the, some oil and for the seal and the bolts for the little piece. Uh, well, some of the some of the things I can start off with is the police. Uh, they are um, not paid very well, so uh, they can be very corrupt. Some of them, and money is always an issue when gringos are involved. You can always count that they will ask for money before before anything real scary happens. It's up to you whether you want to pay them or not. Um, sometimes it's easier. Sometimes it's better off to just go with them to the police station and deal with it there if you have a lawyer. And how do you how do you actually avoid even getting into situations the, like that? The best thing is, yeah, just not to even really look at them and uh, just kind of stay stay away from where they they tend to hang out um, in the certain intersections and uh, don't don't open your uh, doors for them. If they want to take you to the police station uh, in your car, you you keep your doors locked and you tell them to follow you to the police station. And, and the reason for that? Yeah. Uh, they, when they get in your police car, well, technically it's illegal, I believe, uh, for them to get in your car. Um, Would they plant something? They can plant, yeah, they can plant drugs or uh, other kind of things. What about, um, one thing I heard about was never park in dark spots, always be yeah, in the public yeah, eye. Yeah, I don't, uh, going down dark alleys and uh, hanging out in the dark parts of town, um, obviously there's usually, that's a place where things go, go wrong. Also, um, like I said, the highway at night, certain parts of the highway, there's, it can be bad there. They have a couple of roadblock areas where they tend to pull people over for nothing. Um, once again, it's all over money. You said something earlier when I spoke to you about cell phones. Can you explain yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, another thing I've, I've done a few times myself is have your camera out and videotape them when they're pulling you over. And uh, they tend to be a lot nicer that way. They know they're on camera and they know you can put it on the internet. Uh, some of the foreigners here get... Uh, Dash cameras. Yeah, dash cameras. That's a uh, and just swing it towards the yeah. police officer and say, "Could you yeah. repeat that to the exactly. camera?" Exactly, and tell them why you're being pulled over for what, and uh, how much it will cost. You know, if you say it's your seatbelt not on, things like that. Um, because yeah, they will. If they think they're being recorded. They'll actually do their job. You know where I'm from. You can get a tattoo on your arm. No problem. Pay them say goodnight, bye, thank you, but it's, you have to be so much more careful everywhere you go here. Um, you can't let people know where you live. If you need a ride directly to your house, you should get a private taxi or spend extra money on someone a little more reliable, maybe someone that you know, uh, because I rely on motor contrast most of the time because it's the cheapest way to get around. But. As soon as you do that, then people know where you live. And for me, it was either I get dropped off at home or I get dropped off a block down the road, but then I'm also at risk walking home in the dark for that mm. five minutes. So either way, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, being a white, uh, especially single female in this country makes things a little bit more dangerous. Uh, always make sure you have money on you. But that's where it gets in trouble too because you don't want too much money on you that you can get robbed. But you also need enough money on you if something happens you can pay someone off to let you let you go. Even if you're doing nothing wrong, you never know if someone's going to come up and take advantage of you. And that's happened to me a lot. So it's just uh, you have to have 10 eyes here at all times. And that's really all the advice I can give about that. The medical area here certainly has its scams as well. A gentleman I know down here knocked his head during an accident and went for a scan at the hospital. He was told you have a tumor and it's actually growing rapidly so we must operate on you straight away. Not believing them, he decided to take it elsewhere. He was actually heading for Cuba. So he went to a hospital in Cuba where he was told he didn't actually have a tumor. And secondly, if he had had a tumor, they would have had to take several tests in order to see whether it was actually growing. So this was a scam in itself. And he lost money, time and energy from all this. If you do have a serious injury, it's not unknown down here that they'll literally let you bleed to death if you don't have money. Somebody who can come with the money or a credit card so they can be assured their payment up front. It's all about the money for them.
Don't think that they're going to save life first and then take care of money afterwards. Now, heavens forbid something serious should happen to you over here, like an accident where you hurt your arm or your leg. Because there are actually doctors in some of these hospitals that's been known just to take a shortcut and order the leg or the arm to be taken off. Overseas doctors would definitely go all out to make sure you keep your limbs. But that's not always the case here because it's so much about the money. So organize an insurance that'll have you flown back to get the main operation in your home country. All right, let's just say you get to observe an accident of somebody who doesn't have money and you want to be Mother Teresa and help them to the hospital. Don't be surprised if they won't let you leave till you actually pay the bill. Down here, it is typically gringo pays. So just choose wisely who you help because there's always other people around. All right, the medical facilities are here. Uh, as you see, I have a lot of experience uh, with injuries and stories with other tourists here experiencing. Up here on the north coast, the facilities are all about money, uh, not about your health. And I suggest if you have anything serious to go to the capital, go to Santiago to a good facility. They'll treat you right. They're educated. They're not there for the money and uh, had good experiences there at homes in Santiago and also many uh, facilities in Santo Domingo. On the north coast, I've never had a, a good experience. So. so typically, what would they do? Uh, they are trying to what, sell you they more nights in the hospital? or Absolutely. The most money-making scheme there is to have you spend the, the night there. So you could have just a common cold and they're going to say that, uh, you know, we think you have problems with your kidneys and you need to stay the night and we need to check this out. And they want to do CAT scans and things like that when there's clearly nothing wrong with you. You just need some antibiotics or, you know. Is it true that they'll refuse to start operate on people unless they've been paid the money up front? Absolutely. Life or death situation, it doesn't matter. You better have your ATM card and that PIN number and be able to speak it or have someone with you that be able to speak it because they're not going to touch you with, without money in their hand first. All right, thanks for that, Paul. No problem, man. Another thing that people want to be wary of when they come to Dominican uh, Republic is sometimes we might want company, like sometimes you have people that approach us as a guide and they want to show us around. But the thing that we always have to remember is whatever time they spend with us, they're going to want to get paid for. So we have to keep in mind that they're going to want to get paid and we're going to have to establish a price with them before we go off with them. Another thing that's very important, when you go with anyone, you want to see their identification. You don't want to go with anybody that you don't know. You wouldn't do it in the States. You wouldn't do it at your home, so why would you do it here? So you just kindly ask them, can you see their cedular? If they're coming to your hotel room or to where you're, you're going to be staying, you're going to ask them to leave their cedular with the security guard. And that just keeps them more honest because now we actually know who they are. So you don't want to go with anybody that you don't know as well. There's always different things like scams going on, and if you're not familiar with it and somebody approaches you, it could be somebody, an official or whatever, and if they're not honest, and if you're not, if you're not careful, they're going to tell you that, hey, uh, either you give me something because it is my birthday, or you go to jail. Practically, you just go to jail. So that's one of the most important things you got to look out for because it's everybody's birthday. Being in a restaurant here, I hear a lot of stories from a lot of people. One that I heard that really is particularly sickening was um, there was a family that was uh, driving around in the Dominican here, tourists that were at a red light. Um, as it would be, there was a motorcycle driver behind them. They were driving recklessly, pulling wheelies. The moto got away from the, from the, the Dominican. He wound up sliding underneath the car and he wound up dying from this. Um, when the police came, the family was arrested, they were charged, they wound up having to pay over 25,000 U.S. dollars to the family of the, vic the person that died, the Dominican that died under the car. Now, this just goes to show you the corruption and the scamming going on here is at uh, all levels. Uh, I believe it's from the president down, unfortunately. 
this, these people didn't do anything wrong except trying to have a vacation in the Dominican and they wake up to this nightmare. Um, it's just a shame to see that this is how things are done in the Dominican a lot. Okay, is there scams by uniform personnel? Well, I believe so all the time. First of all, there's too many of them. They've flocked the whole North Coast with police everywhere and it's actually quite annoying for people to watch. Well, can we really call it law enforcement? What we see down here is a lot of law abuse. And I think it comes down to one, the fact that they are paid very little. And because of that low pay, they don't attract the best caliber of person to fit that uniform. Secondly, if they did pay them a lot more, well, hopefully they would do some better recruitment. You might also find situations where police will drive up to you and tap the tank of their motorbike and say, Eh, hey, poco gasolina para mi motor, por favor. That's hustling. And that's a scam. Uniform personnel should not be doing that. So the best thing to say to them is, I tell you what, you catch some ladrones, which is gangsters, and then I'll give you a tip. Okay? Busca ladrones, yo paga con propina. Está bien? And then they normally move on. And then they won't hassle you again. You give to them once, they'll keep remembering you and coming back. And if you have 25 police officers doing that, well, that's going to cost you a lot of money, so why even bother starting that nonsense? The other thing about law enforcement personnel, they're supposed to wear name badges. If they don't, it could be a fake police officer trying to get money out of you. So demand to see their ID and have a dash camera, or you can even pull your normal phone camera up and they normally feel so uncomfortable they'll just wave you on your way. Down here you're going to come across roadblocks and usually what they are after is money for their pocket. So either take a side road and go around it, turn around or have a couple of hundred pesos ready because if you tell them you're in a hurry but here's a propina most of the time they'll probably just let you go past and focus on the next car. Unfortunately, but it's like that. I had a situation here whereby I went uh, to the bank with a credit card to take some money uh, inside, uh, where of course you can get, uh, if your card allows it, more money than uh, in the walls. The walls is limited sometimes at 10,000 pesos, which is around $200 uh, dollars or 200 euros. So within uh, the, the, the bank premises, you can get like a thousand. Now, what happened uh, one day was that I went here in Susua to the bank, Banco uh, got uh, money and uh, came to the conclusion that a week later when I uh, looked at my bank uh, account, uh, more money was gone. I investigated that and the bank could see what happened. I'm talking about the bank in Belgium. And they saw that in Sosua, at a certain time, some money was taken, which I had done, I could remember that. And one hour later, in a bank uh, in, Santia, in Santo Domingo, which is at a three and a half, four hours drive from here, uh, the same kind of money was taken again with my card. Of course, I cannot fly, I cannot be in uh, one hour from here to the other end of, of uh, the island. So be very careful with, uh, with your cards um, and I would say try, try uh, to have your money in another way here with you even if you take some, uh, some real money you would change. Yeah one of the things I've had is when you put your ATM card into an ATM machine that's not attached to a bank uh, sometimes what happens is you get uh, a screen that says technical failure trying to take out 10,000 pesos and it doesn't dispense the money but if you look in your account they've actually taken the, the money out of your US account so a couple times I did spend a bunch of times calling the bank and getting that fixed uh, aye, so aye. make sure if you get a technical failure that you check your account balance and make sure that you uh, uh, have your money hasn't been taken out. Thank you very much. Yeah one of the things that I experienced that was kind of on the negative side was uh, I was renting an apartment in uh, Cabarete and uh, they wanted a deposit, which is kind of normal. It's a deposit in the event that you damage the property or the apartment. In 
and so I, uh, I gave the rental company $300 as, a, uh, as my deposit, and I would say maybe a month and a half later, the uh, rental company called me up on like a Sunday morning, relatively early, like at 8 o'clock, and said they wanted an additional $200 as a uh, deposit. And um, I was a little perplexed and a little disturbed because I had a relationship with this rental company and, um, you know, I think I had shown through my past, I guess, uh, my past rentals that I was a responsible person, uh, that I wasn't going to damage the property, and uh, that I was, again, I, I guess the word would be I was squared away. And, uh, and like I said, this rental company, I had, I had, I had a prior relationship that existed for two years. And so uh, one of the reasons actually that, that I used that rental company is because it, I felt that they treated me good as well as I treated them good. And one of the things that I did was that I had always paid early. And in fact, I would made like a, I had paid for three months up front. So I was a little disturbed that they would want an additional money, additional monies or additional deposit on a Sunday morning at eight o'clock that just seemed it seemed as if that money was going to be used for personal use. And as a result, I discontinued my relationship with that company and subsequently moved on. Let's talk about immigrations. Is there scams there? Well, I'll let you be the judge. I just know if you go on the internet and you check a country like Panama, you have transparent rules and laws and prizes, and you can see exactly what visa costs what but they certainly don't have that here. It's even so gray that area that even lawyers find it frustrating to deal with. And a lot of foreigners complain that they have to go to Santo Domingo, they stand in long queues, they've prepared all the documents that they could find out from what they could find on the internet that they had to have ready, only to be told that, oh, you need this as well and that as well. Uh, but if you pay the VIP price, then we can probably look the other way and speed up the process. That's a scam in itself. What's the other alternative to this? Well, you've got to ask yourself, how long are you going to be down here for? Because if you're only going to be here for a few weeks or months, they actually have a government-approved legal overstay program. The immigration made the chart, not the people. So if you go to the airport and you've overstayed two months, ten months, two years, there's a specific fine you pay based on that amount of time over your normal three-month limit. So this could be an option. Let's look at business scams. If you're planning to set up a business down here, one of the biggest scams there is, is employees wanting to squeeze money out of the boss. They know very well they have a three month window where they have to behave themselves. After that, it's amazing how many of them become difficult, go lazy, and when you try to get rid of them, they know you have to pay out a severance pay. That's the labor law here. So if you're gonna get rid of your staff, do it before three months. Otherwise, there could be troubles coming your way. Final thing on running a business here is, once you try to set up an office, anything established, that's when they start coming running from different departments. And then we have the ones that pretend to be from these departments. There's a few of them floating around the region too. And they will try to say you have to give them X amount of money today or they'll shut down your business. Be careful. Hi everybody, uh, Tony here from Canada. Just wanted to uh, share a bit um, about my experiences in the DR. Um, hello Mr. T by the way, I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I've made a few trips to the Dominican Republic, beautiful island. I had a few un unfortunate situations being there and, and I'm a pretty safe guy but even still, you know what, I, I gave that one opportunity a little bit more trust than I should and I lost <clears throat> my bag on the beach. I thought oh, I'll just go for a little bit of a walk around this rock here and jump off the cliff and we're not even talking 50 yards but I had my back turned long enough and by the time I jumped in the water and swam back it was already gone and it was kind of a private beach and 
So I lost a lot of personal items. I brought everything with me that day because I was going to do a day trip and I decided against it. So I had a lot of valuables with me. And that was uh, 14 days into a two months trip in the Dominican. And it kind of it kind of spoiled the rest of my trip um, as far as plans and things that I wanted to do. You, you just got to be on guard and you cannot let things out of your sight and you can't believe you know what they say to be truth. You're only there <clears throat> for a short time, they know that and they will try to get as much as they can out of you um, within seconds of getting to know you. Um, so you know you can be nice and you can give them what you can you can take them out for dinner you can whatever you decide to but don't leave things out of your your sight for too long don't bring them into your apartments there's certain things that you, you just got to be smart about I mean really um, things that we think you know nothing of uh, here in in our own country you know when we're there it's it's not the same <laughs> If you're a single lady coming down here on vacation, uh, you gotta just be cautious of the fine, handsome looking guys. You know, they, um, you gotta be careful of what they're looking for, you know, for you. And they also look for you to give them something. They're looking for something in exchange of being with you or taking you somewhere or for you to pay for the drinks or the, or the food or the bill and things like that. So what usually happens when she goes, but hang on, I'm not paying for everything, what would he typically say? He'll say, well, you invite me, you take me with you and I expect you to pay for it. You know, it's like, okay, I don't have no money. You know, you invited me and I expect, I thought you was going to pay for it. That's me. where the hustle starts. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, come to an agreement on you know okay I can invite you to this is this is a that you know who's gonna pay for what the main thing is who is gonna pay for what and don't assume that he is gonna pay for something they expect you to pay for everything because you come in foreign and that you have money so just make sure everything's pre-negotiated everything is pre-negotiated that's exactly right yes important thing is when you are drinking a uh, watch your drink cover your drink or just you know finish your drink or take it with you don't leave it alone because you know they are things that can be in drinks and you know it can be very dangerous at times if you leave your drinks alone and they can you know never know where you wake never up know where you wake up exactly so very very important take care of your drink wherever you are now a lot of people who come down here think that oh, because I'm German all the Germans are going to be really nice to me or because I'm Canadian all the Canadians are going to look after me. That ain't the case. Be very careful. You'll meet some of the nicest foreigners here you've ever met in your life and you're also going to meet those who are either running from something or running to something or a bit of both. And they're not shy of pulling a scam on new foreigners coming down here. So it's very much about finding out who's who in paradise here and shop safely. Another thing down here you need to watch out for is foreigners who do business promising commissions. One scam is they'll make all the promises in the world. They'll receive the money from the people that you referred, but when it comes out to paying the most important person, you who brought the client, they run for their life or they become very irresponsible. Now the other thing to be careful of is the bigger companies like you have the power company, you have the water company and you have the phone companies. It's a bit of a monopoly in these areas so it's not unusual down here you hear about people who got some huge bill the first time they set up a power account because the power company was cheeky enough to take the previous tenants bill and throw something onto the new tenant's bill. When it comes to water, well, make sure you have street water actually coming to your property. The water company will be cheeky enough to come around and say, you have to pay for water or taxes, even if you don't have any supply to your property. And if you say, well, we have a well, well, you still need to pay because it's on the government's land and all they spin all this kind of nonsense out where they are not even a government department, they are a privately owned company, yet 
It's just a hassle to try to get money out of you. Now, if there's one thing that foreigners seem to get frustrated about down here, then it's handling the hustlers. If you know how to do it correctly, it doesn't become such a big deal. You'll have people come up and ask you maybe for cigarettes, for drinks, for food and other things. Let's take the drink one. If you say to them, I tell you what, I don't even know you, but you seem like a nice lady or you seem like a nice guy. So if you buy the first drink, I'll get the second one. How's that? And a lot of them will then just go away. A big thing is learning how to say no and make sure that it's done politely, but so they will go away. So down here, it's no gracias. Just a quick look, wave the finger, no gracias, and then move on. And then they usually get it. Now, one of the ways foreigners get sucked into scams down here is by feeling sorry for the wrong people. I'm not saying you shouldn't give some money to somebody who's got missing limbs, but always ask yourself, why do they deserve it? Why are they so hard up that I have to give them money? Because they'll be coming from different angles and you can't just be giving out money all the time. So if they come up, let's say children rub their tummies and say they're hungry, well, hand a banana towards them and see how hungry they are. Most of the time they're going to go like this and say something bad to you and walk away because what they're really after was money. The other thing is don't pay people to go away. Some foreigners say, well, I'll give him a hundred pesos, then he'll leave me alone. <laughs> no, that's exactly what they won't. Once they get money out of you once, they're going to keep coming back at you several times that day or the next day and the next day. So it's better to learn to say, no, no pagar dinero para nunca. Pobre gringo. And then they normally get the message that you're not easy to get money out of. And then they move on to the next person. A lot of the scamsters are known to be good at four things. To lie, cheat, steal and let you down. And you've got to be able to spot these people. Often they'll come up and start with a hustle. And they've got stories coming out of their sleeves. And the best thing to say to them is, look, if you respect me, you will leave me alone because I don't have time right now. Do you respect me? Yeah, I respect you. Okay. so. I'll see you later, okay? I'll call you if I need your help. Is that okay? And then they get the idea. It's all about boundaries. But you've got to get your communication skills going down here to have people leaving you alone. Now, when it comes to beggars down here, a lot of them will come up to you with a really old photo of some sick uncle who's just arrived in hospital. But if you take a closer look, the picture that they actually hold in their hands looks like it's from 1995 and it's been through a washing machine twice. So don't fall for this. It's the same pitch they'll use for years about somebody. So be wise. Don't feel sorry for people unless they have solid proof of their case. Now, especially if you come down here as a single person, you'll definitely be approached by people who want to be your friend, who want to give you company. Well, don't let them sit down unless you're serious about it because they will charge you for your time. You may have had them sitting there for half an hour to an hour. You had no intentions of anything else than just talk to them. And maybe you even shouted them a meal or a drink. At the end, they're going to turn around and say, you owe me 2,000 pesos. And you say, for what? That's because they want to get paid for their time. It's a hustle. It's a scam. So before they even manage to pull the chair out, just say, you can sit down, I'll shout you a drink, but I'm not paying for your time sitting here, okay? You gotta be upfront and direct and preempt all these different scenarios where they can scam you for money. One of the things that happened to me was that I uh, took on a, a Haitian gardener part-time and after two years he decided to take me to court uh, because uh, he wanted to claim medical benefits and Christmas bonus and everything else and he wanted to take me for court, to court for over a million uh, pesos and it ended up me being able to 
unfortunately win the case and he was only able to get away with 28,000 pesos but it was a long process and he tried to take me to the cleaners and I'd taken care of him, I'd looked after him but he still wanted to take me to the court. And you mentioned before this video clip he was just part time. Yeah, he was taken on part time, his agreement was part time, there was no contract, nothing to do with health benefits and basically he was claiming health benefits, he was claiming holiday money, he was claiming double time at Christmas, things that were not agreed in advance. But he went to a lawyer and with the labour laws that are they have the uh, they get the benefit of the doubt and therefore he tried to go for over a million pesos which is ridiculous because i was only employing him part time so you're so. going to be doing your own lawn mowing uh, i will and i found somebody else who will just come in for a couple of hours but i have to get receipts and i have to have it very clear cut because if you're not somebody will probably take advantage of you too so. thank you very much there's not a shortage of real estate scams either. Make sure the realtor you pick is from a reputable company. Some of them run around and say, well, I'm selling this piece of land for a friend or this is my piece of land. And if you fall into that little scam and you put a deposit down, that's all they wanted and you'll never see them again. Secondly, you've got to make sure that there's no liens on the properties and there's a title. However, you do have to do your due diligence in finding a good lawyer. Ask around amongst the foreigners and ask several people because you may ask one foreigner and they think that this lawyer is really great and then you get a horror story from somebody else. So once you've heard three, four, five good things about a specific lawyer, well, maybe then there's something about their reputation. Okay, let's say you want to construct something down here. The first thing you need to know is don't lower your standards and hire some cheapy cheapy constructor just because it's a good deal. It may not turn out to be such a good deal at all because some of them are renowned for just taking a deposit and running away. And just one step up from that horror, if they don't run away with your money, well, they may not turn up when they say or turn up with as many people or make the progress as fast as what you wanted. And a lot of the time they are away spending a good portion of that deposit you paid them. Or they're using that money to stop some other upset client slapping them around the ears and using your money for that construction. So do your due diligence and again pick a reputable construction company. As I said in the previous video, this is not just a tropical paradise. It also has its ghettos. What do I mean by that? Well, all the tourist spots attract a certain type of character, whether that be an overseas person or people from the country. For the scamsters down here, our troubles is their opportunity to make money. So the game here is all about prevention. Get to know foreigners very quickly and start feeding on their knowledge. Because it's better to learn from somebody else's mistakes than to make them yourself. Because each mistake cost a lot of money, grief and heartache that you don't want. Okay Matt, uh, we've covered a lot in this video about the different scams and so forth and it's all stemming back to the corruption here. What do you see the solutions are for all of this? I don't know that there is a solution right now. I think you have to be educated and realize that everything that they do here, corruption wise, has uh, an effect on the country, the tourists. For instance, when they close down uh, a restaurant down here for no reason or a bar, that effect is now that other foreigners, which are the majority of the investors down here, are not going to invest in this. And that has a, a ripple effect on this economy down here. I feel that, um, unfortunately, you have people in charge down here that don't understand any kind of businesses and how they work. They solely make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis and whichever way the wind blows. And that's a shame because it's a beautiful area and it can't grow when you have people in charge that don't understand how it runs. Well, overseas it's very known that the two things you can't afford to mess with is repeat business and referral business. So down here, would you say they, they don't care? Or what's they the absolutely thing? don't care. Yeah, it's unfortunate because in the end, they're the ones that are hurting the most. This is a country that relies mostly on tourism and they make decisions that affect that tourism 
Um, and it seems to me that there's no decision making, really, no thought process in that decision making. They just make a willy nilly decision. For instance, they close the town down at midnight. People don't want to come to a tourist area that closes at midnight. And the reasons for them doing that weren't were retarded. There was just really dumb reasons to do that. And in fact, it's done nothing but hurt the region. And these are the people in charge that are duly elected, and yet they don't understand simple business aspects that can grow and help the economy down here. And it's a shame because it's a great little spot. Thanks for your comments. You're welcome. So, you know, unfortunately, if they would just, um, you know, change their policies in a way and understand that um, vacationers and, and tourists are, are their economy. So instead of, you know, ripping them off, because as soon as I got ripped off, I come back here and I start telling people, you know what I mean? And so nobody wants to go to a place, um, you know, that's, they're going to be ripped off or even the threat of it. So they'll, they'll start looking elsewhere and that's what's happening. So it takes away from their, their livelihood and their economy. And in turn, it just keeps them doing even more bad because there's no money there. Why is there no money there? Well, because they keep doing what they've always done and they're getting the same result. In fact, it's, it's just getting worse. And so I just, you know, I, I love the people. They're doing what they have to do to survive. It's unfortunate that they have to go to the lengths and take out of your pocket or when your back's turned and, and steal from you. But they don't have a conscience about it. It's just what they do on a regular basis. So be careful out there and enjoy your trip, but uh, keep an eye on your stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching to this point. I'm just about to wrap up. This video was to help the foreigners who are either coming on a vacation or to live here, but not only them, also to help the good Dominicans who value and appreciate a marketplace that's healthy, prosperous and growing. And hopefully this will help you all. Now, Stay tuned for my next video that I'm working on already, which is about working in Dominican Republic and the pros and the cons, and if you are going to do it, what type of occupations, etc. See you next time. Take care.